A thief, a wizard, and a game developer all walk into a dungeon. Who comes out alive? Well, of course it's the developer. They entered the cheat codes. Yes, that's right. We're going to dive back into the story of the Unity development story and just dive back into it because the greed has taken hold. Unity seems to, they have backpedaled. They, they have said their story. They've said all their things. If you guys want to go see that, I have a whole playlist on this topic. But before I get into the whole video, do hit the like, subscribe, all those fun things because we have grown immensely here. We we hit the 2000 mark, which is amazing. We're gonna do a special celebration Friday night on this channel at about 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. I don't know what we're gonna do yet, but if you got suggestions on how we celebrate this milestone, let me know down below. Until then, make sure you subscribe to the channel. That is what creates this growth that we are seeing right now. And I thank every last one of you that do hit that button. But today we're gonna to talk about Unity and what the rumors are going in and around for the fee structure that they're going to do there. Now, Unreal Engine does have a royalty structure. They, they have a 5% a payout on their royalty. And it seems Gadot, which is another game developer engine that is open source right now, it seems they're getting a full influx from a few other developers in the space saying what Unity has done made them even look back at it and they want to support developers going forward. From gamesindustry.biz, Unity reported tell staff details of runtime fee backtracking. They backed it all up. They, they attempted to apologize with angst and confusion because that is what they decided to do. Executives say the engine maker may cap install payments at 4% of the revenue, meaning they're not completely backtracking on this. They are still going off the install version of that. That's not good news for Unity and that's not good news for developers, meaning no matter how much that you install, I guess maybe we're going to cap it at 4% of the revenue, but you're still going to have to pay the install fee. It's stupid, it's stupid. It should be going off revenue if they want to do a royalty structure, which in the past they said, you could go back to the original OS and not pay anything. That was the whole reasoning behind it. But you know what? They want to change the deal. They're, they're doing it and that's what they want to try and do. Uh, executives informed staff today that uh, some of a planned revision to the controversial runtime fee policy announced last week. In a recording of the all hands meeting, everybody on deck, we've got everything blowing up around us. Everybody get in this meeting. How do we fix it? A maximum cap fee of 4% of a game's revenue over a million dollars. So they are setting a benchmark now that you have to be over a million dollars. That is a big deal because originally it was $200,000 or 200,000 installs. Now they're saying, okay, if you make a million dollars, now start paying us. And then they're going to cap it, but based off the game's revenue off the installs because it's confusing in this point. If it goes, anything that's off the installs is absolutely crap. There is no true metric that you can do unless you're installing malware. And that is what has a lot of people worried about this in the first place because of them merging with Iron Source and the history Iron Source has being a malware in Windows Defender and under McAfee, Norton, all these antivirus systems. The install threshold will no longer be retroactive. So only installs after the imposition of the policy would count towards the threshold. Hmm, it's still, that still doesn't sound like it's a retro, it's still going to hit retroactively. Like, so Cult of the Lamb, a game that's been out for over a year now, going forward, would they still be hit by this? I think any game that was made up to this point should not fall under this, period. Future install, because if they go off installs, I have the game, I uninstall it and reinstall it a year from now. Now they, they have to pay part of that revenue. It doesn't make sense. Unity is no longer relying on proprietary technology to track installs. So they were going to rely on some sort of technology that they have in these systems that sounds like malware or spyware, but instead they're going to ask users to self-report. 
uh, I, I, I don't buy this. I don't buy this at all, and neither should you. While Unity CEO John Riccitalio uh, alleged the company could and could have done better job rolling out the runtime fee plan. Oh, we could have rolled it out better. No, you couldn't have. It's a bold face lie here. Uh, I don't think there's any version of this that would have gone down a whole lot differently than what happened. Well, you knew the backlash was coming. Everyone sold their stocks in the company. So let's get this straight and straight. You knew the backlash would happen. You knew this idea was bad. You had several people tell you from on the inside, tell you not to do this and turn around and quit over it. And you still did it anyway. And now you're like, okay, we're going to just put a cap, a 4% revenue cap on uh, up to, uh, anyone that makes over a million dollars. No, you, you can get bent. Uh, you can get bent and developers, developers are on that side. They are completely on that side. Teteria uh, from ReLogic actually came out with a full statement on this today, which is absolutely a positive win for everyone involved. This is how you take this, uh, completely take advantage of this situation and do something good for the community. This is how things should be. The team at ReLogic has been watching the recent events surrounding Unity with both interest and sadness. The loss of a formally leading and user-friendly game engine to the darker forces that negatively impact so much of the gaming industry has left us dismayed to put it mildly. While we do not personally use Unity outside of a few elements on our console slash mobile platforms, some assets that probably came over. Um, we feel like we cannot sit idly by as these predatory moves are made against studios everywhere. We unequivocally condemn and reject the recent TOS slash fee changes proposed by Unity and the underhanded way they were rolled out. The flippant manner <laughs> with, <laughs> with which years of trust cultivated by Unity were cast aside for yet another way to squeeze publishers, studios, and gamers is the saddest part. This, that, this move was wholly unnecessary pushes things into a tragedy category. A cautionary tale the industry will soon, not soon, forget. We do not feel that a simple public statement is sufficient, even if Unity were to recant their policies and statements, the destruction of trust is not so easily repaired. We strongly feel that it is now equally important to get behind some of the other up and coming open source engines, lighting some candles in an otherwise dark moment. To that end, we're donating $100,000 to each of the open source engines listed below. Additionally, we are sponsoring each of these projects with a thousand a month each moving forward. We all ask in return that they remain good people and keep doing all that they can to make these engines powerful and approachable for developers anywhere. So Godot Game Engine and FNA, I'm not familiar with FNA. Godot, I've heard a ton of since this debacle happened. ReLogic has always been supportive of game developers and indie studios that do things the right way. We feel that our actions in this moment are the best way to carry that mission forward by accelerating and strengthening, completing open source game engines. We hope to empower and assist studios that are struggling with how best to proceed given these recent events. I gotta say to Teria or ReLogic, you guys make an amazing game in the first place. And this is absolutely amazing to hear. I, I th This is all sorts of positive. This, this warms those tinglies. Like this is absolutely amazing to hear and see. And no knowing that there's going to be developers that completely benefit from this type of thing is absolutely great. So what is Godot exactly? They are another engine, but they also have what's called the development fund. And this is where this money is going to go. It's a fund. It's how much money they get in from people donating to them or people just supporting them totally. If you go into the Godot development fund here, it actually shows that the 
is 47,000 per month. They have 1,300 members and 10 sponsors. And they just have tiers. That's all it is. You can support them this way. This is a better way to go. You support them, then you support your developers. You support them by buying the games and do and playing the games and just having fun with them. And this is something that's amazing here. I don't know if the games I play, like Cult of the Lamb or Phasmophobia or uh, Blasphemous 2, those games, I don't know if they can simply transfer to Godot, but in a lot of cases, there's going to be developers that have to learn a new language, have to learn new ideas, but because they did know Unity, you should be able to go to this open source license and actually figure it out fairly easy at that point. If you program on one, it's not hard to program on another one. Now the Godot comes under an MIT license, which is a permission granted free of charge, um, and it's as is. Like they keep doing updates on it, it is as is. And I have recently downloaded Godot to take a look at it myself because I am interested in this type of thing. Maybe, maybe I can get, get along or something, I don't know. That's whatever, maybe sometime in the future. Anyway, this is great news to hear. Uh, to Teria, I gotta give, it, give you props because I haven't seen, I, I haven't seen anything this good in the sense of gaming that's not greedy that isn't just trying to outright outlandishly take you down now with the unreal engine they also do have their five percent royalty due on five a million dollars or more there is other things that you can do to kind of get this down or do other things but you have to go through the whole whole rigmarole and actually go through sign up with them, do all the things as a developer in that sense. So there is things that you can do there, but this, I, I gotta say, they're Epic Games and I, Epic Games has their own issues I see behind them, th like everyone. But what Unity is absolutely trying to do is, is pull the wool over our eyes and try and show us that they're, they're doing something differently. But as we see in, in the article here, the little bit of rumors that they're doing, oh, we're gonna put a cap on it, but we're still going off the install fees. Oh, we're 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 no longer going to use our methods to find out what those installs, and it's going to be a self-report. Yeah, right. I can't trust you. Nobody can trust you in the in the market space anymore. You gotta backtrack it all at this point, or make Unity open source and go the, the other way of it, because that's what Wizards of the Coast had to do with the OGL, the open gaming license. That is a whole different debacle. If you guys want to see that stuff, I do also have a playlist on the open gaming license. Uh, that was a whole thing through Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro with Dungeons and Dragons, where they tried to claw back and do the same sort of royalty structure. And then they were also trying to say, we own your works and even though you guys made it. No, that's not how it works. Anyway, I'm your proud Canadian Phoenix Cinder Shadow. I am signing off here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you again very soon.